my parents got life insurance policies on their kids and grandkids. And recently, um, my dad wanted to make us all the owners. So now I'm the owner of this life insurance policy, and I was looking it over. And it's investing about 30% in BlackRock. And so I really wanted your opinion about whether I should go ahead and take the cash value out of this and um, what how, what I can maybe share with my siblings and my kiddos about why maybe we don't want to invest in something that's investing in BlackRock. Mm. <sighs> Lots of moving parts there. Um, one of the things that I would do before you decide to surrender a life insurance policy is to consider, you know, do you need the protection? It sounds like you have a family of your own. I don't know if you have any other life insurance that would protect them in case something happens to you. That's the first thing that you want to consider before you give up any any kind of protection. Um, The next thing that you probably want to do is contact the insurance company and ask for an in-force illustration. So it sounds to me that the kind of policy that you have is a uh, variable universal life policy. So the cash value that is accumulated is invested in um, sub-accounts that are kind of similar to mutual funds. So you have different investment choices that you can invest the cash value in, and that will hopefully grow. The Enforced Illustration is going to show you how well that life insurance policy has performed over time. So you want to make sure that it's healthy enough. I don't I don't know if you're going to continue to add to it, if it's a paid-up policy or whatever, but you know, going forward, you're probably going to have to make a decision about whether to continue to put money into it. And if you don't, the Enforce Illustration will tell you at what point can you expect that, that coverage to terminate. So um, there comes a point in a life insurance contract when the cash value, if there's not premiums being paid into it, the cash value has to continue paying for the cost of insurance. So once you answer all of those questions, the next thing that you should do is find out what other investment choices you have inside of that policy. So you may have you may be able to move away from the BlackRock options um, into different sub-accounts without actually surrendering the policy. Oh, so I can maybe ask the insurance company to do that? Yeah, so y- there should be a menu of different sub-accounts that you can invest the cash value in. So I would I would contact them first and ask them, what are all your options? You know, do you have any uh, investment options inside the life insurance plan that is that that don't include BlackRock. Okay, that's a good that's a good thought. I do already have the enforced policy illustration, and it was uh, the premiums are only like one hundred and twenty dollars a year, so it'll eventually eat it up. Um, but I don't really know how to read the those illustrations. I'm trying to find somebody that can really help me and. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I re- really would like to start with that, what you suggested. Um, I don't need the policy. My kids are grown. Okay. But um, I, have to, it, I would be taking out at least more than my parents had put in initially. So I don't feel bad about, you know, taking out the cash um, because I wouldn't be taking out less than what they initially put in. So. So that brings up another issue. If you take out more than what was put in, then there can be some some tax consequences as well. So you'll want to check into sure. what that might be. But, um, you know, it, it could be a great way to continue to grow that money tax-free if you can find a decent investment option. Um, also, if you don't need the protection, you could consider um, using it in your estate planning. So... Uh, life insurance proceeds pass to your heirs' income tax-free, whereas other assets that you might have may not. If you have an IRA, for example, or a 401k, when that money gets passed to your children or to a non-spouse, that money, or when it gets passed to anybody, it's it's taxable. But if it gets passed to a non-spouse, that money has to come out within 10 years, and that is taxable. So... Mm-hmm. Um, 
the Enforce illustration will show you basically if you, I don't know how they ran it, but if they ran it with you continuing to pay the, the $120 premium every year, it will show you an estimate of what the cash value is expected to be. Now, if it, if it shows that number growing at 8% or 10%, I would take that with a grain of salt. I don't think that, that they still do that. I mean, I would look at a growth rate of more like four or 5%. That's going to, you know, that's probably a little bit less than what it could actually earn if you invest it in the, in the equity options, but that's going to give you kind of a, a worst case or a a low case scenario about how long the policy will last. Um, You can also ask them to run it in a way that shows if you don't pay any more money into it, because the way that life insurance policies work is there's a cost of insurance and your cost of insurance increases as your life expectancy decreases. So the older we get, the more expensive insurance becomes and that cost of insurance increases every year. So that's one of the things that the Enforce Illustration will show you. At some point, the cost of insurance is likely to overtake the premium if you're even continuing, if you're even going to continue to pay it. And the, the cost of insurance will be and the expenses of the policy will be paid by the cash value. So that's going to, at some point, the ca- you'll see the cash value build up in the illustration, and then you'll see it start to decrease. And once it starts to decrease, it tends to decrease very, very quickly. So you'll kind of want to keep an eye on that if you if it's something that you decide to keep. 